So far we have been describing motion as a linear motion along one, two or three axes. But now we're going to be adding in rotational motion is the possibility to turn around one, two or three of those axes. Let's first have a look at uh, what we used in the linear case to describe motion. What we were trying to describe is position, displacement, we had velocity, and acceleration. And the variables we used were s, or x, or y, or z, displacement being the delta s, being the difference between the final and the initial position, velocity v, and acceleration a. Now in the rotational case, we're going to try to give the exact same things, position, displacement, velocity, and acceleration, but in this case as rotation around an axis. So, the position, instead of giving it as a distance traveled, is an angle traveled. The displacement is simply the change in the position of an angle. The velocity for the rotational case is going to be omega, and the acceleration we're going to be calling alpha. Note that they are really the same things. The only thing that might look a bit difficult is that we're using Greek characters. As a general rule, when we uh, explain rotational uh, entities, we are using Greek characters. It makes it look very fancy and very complicated, but actually at the end of the day, it's exactly the same thing as we had it linear. So if you don't like the Greek characters, replace those letters by anything else that you want. Uh, it will still get the job done. Now, what are the SI units that we are using? In the linear case, we are used meters for position and displacement. We used meters per second uh, for velocity, and we used meters per second squared for acceleration. In the rotational case, we're going to give the angle in rads, radians, so the displacement also in radians. The angular velocity is going to be given in radians per second and the acceleration in radians per second squared. Now if an object is traveling around a circular path, we can give its position either in linear variables like position s, as how far has the object traveled along the path, or we can give it in angular rotational uh, variables. There is a link between those two, which is quite simple. The position is the radius times the angle in rads. If you think about it, the angle is given in rads, so a full circle would be 2 pi, if I multiply the full circle with r, well, what I get is the circumference, which would be the linear displacement along the circumference of uh, the circle. As we had it for position, we're going to get the same thing for displacement. Displacement is delta s is r times delta theta. For velocity, linear velocity gives us r times omega, and for linear acceleration, if I follow the same pattern, A equals R times alpha. But wait a minute, in my last video I talked about something like centripetal acceleration that comes into place. Uh, in that video I figured out that I have a centripetal acceleration which is r omega squared. 
So then what is my R times alpha? Well, it's very simple. My R times alpha is the component of the acceleration that goes along the circle. So this is my A, I will call it tangential, while the A centripetal is an acceleration that goes towards the center, and then together they actually form my total acceleration. So I have my A tangential and I have my centripetal acceleration, which together will form me my total amount of acceleration. 